Hi, this is Cutter. Today we talk about mechanic. Hi guys, welcome back to Multimechanic PJ. So as I was telling you earlier, my engine now have 200 hours. I replaced a few piston meanwhile, but never replaced the crank. So today we'll disassemble everything and inspect it all. So I will leave Pierre working and I will go back behind the camera. So the first thing to do is going to be to empty the engine oil. I say engine, but it's actually transmission oil since a two-stroke engine get lubricated by the oil in the gas. So just unscrew the plug underneath and let it leak. After that, we're going to uh, disassemble the head. So there's a six nuts holding it and a few washers. Lift the head, look at the O-rings, what it looks like. Should be in good conditions. After that, Pierre is going to remove the power valve side cover housing. There's four bolts holding it and there's going to be a little lever. If your cover is stuck there, just hit it gently with a rubber hammer or mallet and it should come off. And then he's going to remove the other power valve cover. It's good to go and check out in there because there's always a lot of oil and grease sometimes and uh, it's a good thing to just clean it up and see if everything works well then it's going to remove the little side covers because there's two valves on the side of the cylinder that open at really high rpm we're also going to look if they work fine if they're not stuck or anything so now it's going to remove the little lever on the side this is actually the actuator for the power valve on the cylinder and then he's gonna loosen the cylinder nuts there's four of them one at each corner now he's gonna remove the intake boot so there's the reed valve in there so it's a good time to inspect them see if nothing's broken or cracked and look at the intake boot if it's not cracked or if it's not damaged with the gas from the uh, carburetor, the boot uh, often comes dry, so it's a good time to uh, check for crack, for dryness. For the reed valve, you're gonna be looking at the tip, see if nothing's missing or cracked, and uh, see if they're in good condition. Now it's going to carefully lift the cylinder, and then expose the, the piston. Take your time and make sure uh, you didn't forget anything. So here it is, the whole piston, still in decent shape. It had uh, a little more than 20 hours in it. So you could see some scratches, but nothing too bad. We're still gonna replace it with the new one. So now to remove the piston, you're gonna take out one circle clip from the little notch on the side of the piston. And then hopefully you uh, get the same tool that Pierre has special puller to pull the piston pin you could try to push the pin out with the with an extension or something sometimes it works so now we're looking at the wrist pin you can see some wear on it so we're going to replace it and then the bearing is going to uh, get away too and get a new one and then we're going to remove the cylinder dowel pin so we don't lose them and then take out the old gasket. We're just gonna take a quick look at the crank, see if it's still in the spec. So we had a 0.5 millimeter of play in the rod. So it's still in the spec. The shop manual calls for a maximum of 0.75 
millimeter of side clearance but we're still going to replace it since I really don't trust it anymore now we're going to take out the kickstart put it out of the way and then the shifter and then uh, we're gonna take out uh, the nut for the flywheel the washer comes with it and we're gonna install the, the puller you need a special puller to take out the flywheel because it's press fit on the shaft so don't try to hit it or anything and then when you're looking at your uh, magneto you should see a mark and an arrow that's gonna tell you where it actually is so please take note of where it is you can take a pen and uh, dry a little mark there so you know where it was at so loosen the three screws and uh, take the magneto apart and then he's going to remove the wood rough key on the other side we're going to uh, take off the cover to go uh, disassemble the clutch so there's a few screws holding it together you don't have to take them all out uh, it's gonna be the uh, longest screws so look at the Pierre doing it you'll, you'll notice he's not removing all of them so now that it starts to leak we can tell it's all loose so we're just gonna pull on it we now have access to the clutch and all the parts inside. We're going to assemble the clutch. So remove all the bolts and the springs. Then you'll be able to remove all the clutch disc together. Check them out. It's easy to see that I don't have any wear at all on my clutch disc. We're going to put it to the side and the cover doesn't have any wear at all so now we're gonna take out the parts in the center so there's a bearing and a rod that's all to activate the clutch from the inside so now Pierre is going to unlock the center nut so with the screwdriver it's gonna hit the lock and unlock it so now he's going to take the impact wrench to loosen the nut do not use a screwdriver or a pry bar because uh, you might break it. it. Happens to me when I was a little younger. I tried to loosen it with a ratchet and a pry bar. So first remove the clutch bus and then there's a washer and then remove the clutch basket. And then he's going to remove the shaft that he uses for the kickstart. There's a washer in the back. Now it's the shifter shaft and there's a washer behind it. Now we're going to remove the bolt and the gear on the end of the crank. So it's, you're going to need an impact wrench to uh, take that off because it's super tight. So we take off the gear, put it to the side and there's a spacer behind it too. Now Pierre is going to disassemble the seal retainer and is going to remove two bolts for the shifter system. This is a complicated system. There's a bunch of small parts. So be careful while you take it apart. You could leave it all assembled if you take it off carefully. Now it's really important to not use the impact wrench on that part because it's tend to be fragile so you're gonna use the ratchet to loosen it you can now use the drill since you loosen it so now he's going to disassemble the little snap ring that holds the gear on the shaft and the big washer that was behind the clutch basket now we're gonna go on the other side and take out the chain guide there's a few bolts behind it, you're gonna have to reach. Now pretty much all the Allen bolt that you see is gonna have to be taken out. There's the one holding the engine together, except for one that holds the clutch lever. 
there's also a few boats inside where the magneto was, that's why we took it out. Be sure to uh, go around your engine if you didn't forget anything. Now Pierre is going to use a special puller. It's uh, adjustable. So two of the arms are going to be closer to each other. So this tool is going to help us disassemble the side cover. Make sure it comes apart. The bearings are pressed on the crank, so that's why we use the puller. So it's going to go manually just to feel what's going on. You don't want to get it open too fast. You want it to spread out evenly. You want to go progressively, see how it reacts. Give it a few uh, hit a mallet, see what it does. And then you keep on screwing in. You'll see the cover coming, so make sure it comes out straight. You can now screw it by hand, so it come out a good way. Now that we got it open half of an inch, we're gonna take out the puller and we'll put the engine on its side and we'll be able to open it. So the crank is gonna stay on one part of the engine and all the transmission parts are gonna stay on the other side of the engine. So now to disassemble the transmission, you might have to hit it a bit with a mallet. Just try to get everything loose. So now you should really take your time, do it carefully. Try to uh, see where all the parts are. Do not take it all apart. You should start by taking out the shift fork and the shift cam. They're the first one to come out. It's a good idea to just lay down everything on the table. Keep your transmission shaft assembled. You don't want to mess around with the gear. Now we're going to look at our bearings. See if everything's fine, if they roll well. Now Pierre has reinstalled his puller on the other cover. So he's gonna push the crank out of this casing. So he's gonna go manually to see uh, what it's doing. It should come out pretty easily. There you go. So now I can remove the tool from the casing. Now we're gonna remove our crank seal. Gonna use a large screwdriver and just pry them out. Now we're gonna use the press to remove the crank bearing. So we found socket about the same size as the bearing. So we're just gonna press them out. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So we now have all the important parts for our engine. So we're gonna make sure everything is ready for reinstallation. Take off all the silicone from the engine there's no gasket there between, it's only a good silicone sealant. Here is our uh, cylinder and our piston, so we're gonna leave Pierre, the specialist, uh, look at it. He has a special tool to measure it, just gonna make sure it's not oval and it's uh, all the same size, up and down and side to side. So he's gonna check to see if our cylinder is still round. If it doesn't vary from the top to the bottom and if it's still in good shape. It's really important to get a good measurement for your cylinder. It's going to tell you what piston you should use. For all the measurement, you should always refer to your shop manual. All the sizes in there. You can also go to my website. I have all the pistons listed there with the sizes. The first thing to do is to get a good measurement of your cylinder and from there it tells you what piston to use. So that's it, we took everything apart. So uh, Pierre measured the cylinder, he made sure everything is alright. So size is good, so I could uh, reuse it. I uh, also have a new crank. I'm not gonna reuse this one because it's been there for too long. I'm just gonna have to order a new piston and new bearings and then a few seals and a gasket to go with it. So I will invite you to click like, 
and uh, subscribe and please leave a comment if you have any question and I'll see you in the next video. La, 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 la.